This is one of our series of interviews with innovative scientists in Israel, and particularly in the biomedical field, and particularly in connection with the Institute for Medical Research, Israel, Canada. Yehudit Bergman, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yehudit, you're uh, outstanding as a scientist. I know you scientists are tend to be modest, but you've won prizes, etc. But what makes your portfolio interesting is you cover such a wide area. How do you do it? I mean, we'll get into some of those areas, but most people are specialists in one thing. I think you cover four different big areas. Who knows what else you do? Um, I work hard, and it just it's very interesting for me. So this is the drive, I think, that I like to try to see different fields and also try to understand what's similar and what's different and then contribute to each field from thinking in the other field. But there's a connection between them. Right. Okay, there we'll, is we'll ask connection. you what the connection yeah. is. Let's try one of them because one of your early fields is immunology, right? Describe your work in immunology. So in immunology, we would like to understand how the body makes the repertoire of antibodies. How do we make so many antibodies to cover everything we need in our uh, trial to resist all pathogens, for instance? And there is a very specific process that occurs during formation of the genes that will encode the antibodies. And it's very, very unique only to this system. And there are two things that are very, very unique to it. One, that rearrangement of pieces of DNA need to take place before expression. So usually most of the genes, they are expressed from the gene itself the way it is present in the germline, in all cells. But with the immunoglobulin genes, they have to undergo some type of a rearrangement in the genome itself, only in cells, in lymphocytes, which express and secrete the antibodies. So this is very unique. At one point, people thought that maybe in the brain there is something similar to this particular rearrangement process, but it's only unique for hemoglobin. I see, just for antigens. Yeah, so this is one unique feature okay. of this process. The other one is in every cell, you have two genes for every genes. You have two genes the, on two chromosomes, this, the pair of identical chromosomes. And in this particular system, only one allele, what we call an allele, one chromosome is chosen for experience for rearrangement and for expression at the end. So one keeps the constant and one's the variable? No. No? They both have the constant and the variable. Oh, I but see. But only the rearrangement that gives later on the product, the antibody itself, occurs, the expression occurs on one of the chromosomes. The see. other pair of the exactly the same sequence is not expressed. So the cell has to decide to choose one out of two. And it has a beautiful biological se sense to it. So the body, the lymphocyte, these are the cells that make the antibodies. They need to make a very good antibody in order to help us to survive. Now, if we will make two antibodies per cell, we'll have a problem. Because if there will be two very good antibodies, then we are fine. But if for instance, one will be a very good antibody, and the other one will be a very bad antibody. Still, the cell will secrete both of them, and it can cause chaos in the immune system and cause diseases. Oh, so, is it because one antibody will find the other? No, one, for well, instance, one antibody will be against a pathogen, yeah. which is a good antibody. Right. And the other antibody will be directed against something in our body. Oh, we'll turn on the body itself. Exactly. Oh, so we'll have a very good antipathogen reaction, but we will have also an anti-self. It will attack ourselves. So we need to make sure that for each lymphocyte, only one antibody is made. So if it's good, it will get what we call the signal for life. 
and it will live and will secrete antibodies. But if it makes a bad antibody, for instance, one that attacks our tissue, then this cell is going to be dead by a different process. So we eliminate all the cells that make bad antibodies and we keep and cherish the one that make very good antibodies. But there are some diseases which are related to bad antibodies, right, that attack our cells. What is, do you don't do, that's not your area of research, is no, it? No, we don't work on what you call autoimmune, autoimmune diseases. diseases. No, yeah. we don't wor work on particular autoimmune diseases, but we do have them in our thinking, because in some of them, this is the process that the bad lymphocytes were not selected against. So they kept in the reservoir of all the, the cells in the body and ma they make bad antibodies. So these are the two main basic phenomena that create all our immune system. Rearrangement and choosing one out of two. And your research was really on the mechanics of how that happens, right? right. Is it possible to explain that mechanics to a lay audience? Yeah, it is. So the two, the two alleles, the two genes are identical, almost identical in, in sequence. So how do you choose one and not the other? So I'm sure you've heard from other about epigenetics. Oh yes. This is what, well, you know. Well, let's explain it to the audience. The, the epigenetics is a level of regulation that is not connected to the sequence of the DNA itself, but it's rather the envelope that surrounds the DNA. And it has a very important role in affecting the regulation of gene expression. It can either help turn the genes on or turn the genes the off. The switch system. Exactly, it's a switch system. So in a cell, we have two genes that are identical in sequence. But the epigenetics, the organization of one allele is different than the other allele. So when the machinery, the molecular machinery comes and looks where to do rearrangement, it sees one with a nicer and a better envelope. And it says, oh, this is a better substrate for me to go to. And it goes first to this allele and it rearranges and then expresses. It makes one the right hand and one versus the left hand or vice versa. I mean, is, do you ever speculate on why we've built the system or why nature has built the system like this that has pairs and makes choices, why we're left-handed or right-handed or, you know, on the macro level, but it happens on the micro level very particularly. Yeah, in fact, you're, you're absolutely right. It's a very good question because I say that choosing one for yeah. rearrangement is unique to the lymphocytes, but expression of one of the two choices is not unique only to lymphocytes. Although the olfactory system is like that, you just express one, although you have a thousand others. And recently there is another study that says that 10% of our genes, it's an an incredible amount, yeah. are expressed from one chromosome and not from the other. So the rationale can be different for the different tissues, but, so I, I just told what is the rationale for the immune system, and different rationale could be for other systems. But I do think that the building blocks of the mechanism, how it works, maybe share similarities among all system that you have choosing one out of two. And why that is. I mean, it puzzles why? me as a philosopher. Yeah, uh, no, but for the immune system, it's yeah, easy, it's easy. To, uh, to explain. Because it is for, a functional purpose. Right. For other loci in the genome, you have, not always we know what is the, the logic, but there are some important. Well, we're going to take a break, but before we do, I want to signal what I'm going to talk to you about, because you, you then jump from your immunology work to stem cell work, and you don't initially see why the connection or how you did the connection, and so I'm going to explore that with after the break.